For our final round of interviews, we met three, three people whose lives have been hugely affected by the Iraq War. However, they are not soldiers or army generals. They are ordinary Iraqis who worked for the coalition forces. We aren't allowed to show you their faces because some people in Iraq think that they are traitors and have threatened to kill them. What inspired you be to become an interpreter? See, being in an environment uh, when you have the, to make a very hard choice, either to, to face death every day or participate in rebuilding your country, uh, it's, it's not an easy choice to make. But I've been in a situation where I have to make a choice, either to put myself in danger or risk, and risk my family life as well, or start moving on. What, ha what happened ha happened in, in the war, and now we have to focus on our future. So the best thing to do that is through working with the coalition forces because they have the plan how to do it. Other people around in the same place, they just wanted to Iraq to to go back uh, 100 years in in the history, and because they only believe in very radical thoughts, and working with the coalition forces, whether they're the Americans or the British forces. Uh, was a very, very tough and also very uh, enthusiastic de decision to make. Uh, I was, I was inspired to rebuild my country through working with the British forces. Mr. H worked with the coalition forces to help rebuild the Iraqi education system, and he was very proud of his job. But he had to be careful that no one found out what he was doing. We used to be undercover. I used to be a dentist working in Iraq. I, uh, I carry my coat when I'm going to the green zone. So the people from Taliban or from, uh, let's say, Qaeda, they think I'm going to my clinic because I'm carrying my coat. And sometimes I choose a different way. It's 10 minutes from my home where I work. I had to go to 30 minutes trip, then change my ways and change sometimes my clothes to go back to my work. And then when I come home, I come from a different way. So I find it a, a very tough way to meet them or and sometimes you have to say hello to them so that you are, they, would, they won't think that you are against them. Um, they are just people you normally see in every, every day, but when you, think into, when you see in, in deep into their eyes, you can feel they are bad people. Mr. J's job with the coalition forces was also very dangerous. He worked as an interpreter for the British Army and found every day very frightening. It's not easy job because you might uh, lose your life or any one of your family will be caught by militia. So you have to be a brave man and to feel like a soldier because when you are patrolling outside, you have to think any, at any time whether you are be shooted by a sniper or there is a rocket will come next to you or there is RBG-7 will attack the tank that you are in or a missile against the uh, aircraft because I work as interpreter with the uh, Air Force, British Air Force for two years and a half and it was not easy job. Uh, what was the scariest moment? One of the scariest moments I ever seen that one day while I, uh, I am in the British bases we have been attacked by mortars about 250 just in three or four hours and we thought that everyone will lose his life. Sadly, a lot of the people they know did die during the war. They were murdered by the militia who accused them of being traitors and working for the coalition forces. Because of our work, um, I've lost five of my colleagues because of roadside bombs and assassinations, because they were, in some way, uh, the, the terrorists or the insurgents knew that they were working for the coalition forces. Uh, first, they were kidnapped and then they were, uh, they were killed. Um, nobody knew how, how, pe how the insurgents knew that they were working for the coalition, but uh, of course when you're working for, you know, working with a, with a lot of different people, so one of them might be, might be a traitor or a spy on you, who's, who's, who's passing information to the wrong people. Uh, so I think in five years, we lo I lost about five of my colleagues. Uh, two of them were, were young, young, young ladies, who've been maybe in their mid twenties. Uh, they were working because they were working for the, to to build the country. They were working as they were they weren't even interpreters, they were working like simple things like their clerics or things like that. Uh, but everyone was treated the same. We were 
were all all considered as collaborators and, and traitors. So uh, they they put a price on our heads. They, that we all all of us should be killed. Because of their work in the collation services, some people in Iraq have threatened to kill them, so they have had to move to Scotland in order to be safe. They may never be able to return to Iraq. They have sacrificed a lot for their country and does. We, we wondered if anyone here would be able to sacrifice that much. I don't really know if I would or not, but I think I could have maybe tried to, but I don't think I would really like it that much. I'd, I'd try, but I, I don't know whether I'd be able to put my life at risk. So. I would want to be able to do, but I don't think I would have the courage. I think I am like Scottish, so I have to do it for my country even though maybe I don't want to do it. If I had to put my life at risk, um, I would take like my family to a safer place or something and then do that so that it doesn't affect anyone else, just me. What, what would you have done if you were Jack and Harry and you were forced to go to war? How would you feel? I'd feel very angry because I might have not wanted to go to war, um, which I don't want to go to war, but um, I'd be really angry. Well, you'd have to go and I wouldn't feel that happy. I'd be quite angry. Well, I don't think war is like a right thing to settle things like between countries. So I think it'd be like very hard to put like your life at risk for something that you don't agree that your country's doing. I'd feel upset, maybe a bit angry at being forced into it because I wouldn't want to go to war because it's horrible. What has this project taught you about war? Well, this project's taught me that war is not just a game that we play on our Xbox or our PS3. Uh, war is real. Before, I thought that sort of war was something that just soldiers took part in out in the battlefield, but now I know that roughly everyone is affected by it. I used to always think it was about killing, uh, but now I keep on, I think more about the people. I've ke I've come to my senses because I thought war was just a little laugh, but it isn't now. That I've realised. How is your opinion of war changed? Well, I didn't really know much about war, but now I think um, it's cruel and sad how people kill one another when you could just sort of be friends. How do you feel when you're playing your war games on the computer? Do you feel any different having taken part in this project? Uh, do you feel different, sort of? I wish you didn't really have to kill them now. I wish you could just sort of like talk to them and ask them to go away or not have to do it at all. In these war games you can just respawn, but now in war if you die you're dead and you have to stay there. Can you sum up war in one word? War is changing. War is emotional. War is threatening. War is frightening. War is scary. War is terrifying. War is pain. War is savage. War is deadly. War is devastating. War is destruction. War is evil. War is cruel. War is horrific.